back. Random TV Review. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lynette. Coming in with love and marriage. I didn't say hi. <laughs> Huntsville this week. Listen, this video will come up right after the episode is over. Because guess what? We realized that um, the own network is doing a, a little... A um, little bit of power. A little put power, a little stars. Put on it out there early. Put it on the app. I can appreciate you for it, though. So thank you for my homegirl. I'm really been. She let me in on that secret. Yeah. I, I was like, how? The hell is she getting her goddamn recaps out so goddamn early? And I know she lives a full life just like we do. And y'all know we get ours out sometime on Sunday. I said, oh, they posted up like at mm -hmm. midnight on freaking Saturday morning. So, yep. okay, we got it. So, this is going to be early. All right, so what's the name of this episode? Going for broke. Going for broke. I'm going to go ahead and read you a statement because last week we questioned why Kimmy's parents. Kimmy and Maurice's parents had never met. And them jokers been together for seven some years. Yeah. It didn't sound right to none of us. So she hit me up. See, li listen. <laughs> I appreciate the cast. Because yeah. anytime we have a little question or a little doubt about something that ain't adding up. Yeah, they, they, they fill in the holes. They fill in them holes for us, man. Yeah, they come through and they be like, this is what had happened. <laughs> and this is how it went. So I appreciate it. So she hit me up and she said, parents, not as... Not exactly spry and all live in different areas. Maurice's dad is in Michigan. His mom is in Florida. And my parents are in Maryland. Go ahead, DMV. Yeah, DMV. And we, of course, are in Alabama. All have visited a couple of times, but never at the same times. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Great review. <laughs> so, that answers the question. So, it <laughs> seems like Maurice's parents are no longer together so one lives in one state one lives in another mm -hmm. state and kimmy's parents live here in the dmv yeah. so they never get together at the same time so that makes more sense indeed all right so this week coming in off the tail of last week you know the wedding is over everybody's trying to come back from miami and settle down back into the routine of life so you got um letitia and Marso over there he's back into his listen I'm you sick of need, this. You need to cook, clean. I'm, yeah. <laughs> and she wants to order pizza and he was like, no, nah, hell no. I want a home cooked meal. So she hits him with the ooh wee once again. Listen, I don't set up a day going interview with this company. I want to go on out of here into commercial real estate. And was it real estate? Commercial real estate? Yeah, commercial, commercial real estate. Real. Yeah. And he was like, no, no, hell no. no. And what's going to happen with these guys doing kids, kids. running around yep. this guy doing house? And she was like, you know, who is my number one support system when it comes to these kids? He was like me. She was like, uh, uh, not you. My mama. My mama. And I, I think like, that this oh, is the time when we okay. bring mama in. He was looking at her like, listen, what we're not going to do is talk about this right here. Because what she did over there in Miami was disrespectful. Really yeah. And, and, and I agree. And, and you need to talk to her. Or we need to talk to so her to get it straight. So <clears throat> they've been having run -ins. That's what I, I picked up on. They've been yeah, having run -ins. Uh -huh. And it just came to a head yep. over there at the wedding. Like everything came to a head at the goddamn wedding. <laughs> and she wants to bring her mom into the house to help her with these goddamn kids. And I'm like, baby. So how that's going to work, man? Yeah. So they couldn't get along at the table at a wedding. And that was just for a week. You're no, talking about, a weekend. Yeah, a weekend. So moving in forever? No, maybe she I, could be on I, the same block down the street. No, buy a house next door. And she just stay over there. And when she need to watch the kids, she's going to take the kids next door. Hello. I used to do it back in the day. So, you know, they kind of cut that a little <laughs> little, little short. We didn't get a whole lot of them. Um, yeah, he didn't say much about that. But Letitia ended up going to an interview. And she totally sucked at the interview. Mm -hmm. And we understand when you I have a out yeah. there, you, you be like, so the first one usually is your um, your dry run. Let me tell you, <laughs> some people might get pissed off, but that's okay. Truth Why? always hurt. The people that are the best at interviewers are job hoppers. Yeah. And you get into a career and you get settled and you've been in there for 10, 15, maybe even five years, man. So if you jumping around every three months, you got a new job, you ought to be the best. Yeah, you're a professional. Like yeah. It. Like at this point, I wouldn't even, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't need to take some classes or watch some YouTube videos on how to interview. Mm -hmm. I used to be really good at because I used to work in HR. So mm -hmm. I knew, look, even if I didn't know the job, I knew the answer y'all were looking for to give me the job. But the truth is now, it don't really even matter what kind of skills you got, 
what you say in the interview, yeah. they already know who they want anyway. Especially. It's all about numbers. Yeah. It's a quota. Exactly. So, so if yeah, if you don't if you don't fit that that description of what they looking for, they ain't gonna hire. I don't care if you got the skills or, or the got their background for it, man. Mm -mm. So, <clears throat> Maurice and Kimmy are over at the house and they're going through their gifts and seeing who got them what. <laughs> and they came across these two lovebirds and it was like, <laughs> Kimmy was like, uh, mm -hmm. Birds? They look like, they look like chickens. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maurice was like, I think they came from um, Melody. And he was like, we gotta put these up in the kitchen and do something. He said, this and is the best, this is the best they could do. So Kimmy was like, no, this ain't even my this ain't even my get down. I don't even do trinkets and stuff like this. So no, he was like, listen, if we don't put this up when they come around here to this house, they gonna have something gonna, to say. it's gonna be some skit. So just put them up. As soon as they leave, take them back down, do something. But these got to be up in the house when it, they come through. It looked like a cake topper, though. It did. Yeah, it, it looked did. like a cake topper. And, I kept look <laughs> and it wasn't that it was ugly, but you give people stuff that's their style. Yeah. Certainly if y'all Especially know friends. each, yeah, y'all know each other, friends. yeah. So then they got to this one particular <laughs> gift, and it was a little risque, but and they knew the way It's time to get it mm -hmm. in. Yep. So it's a, it's a robe. Maurice was like, hey, you can stop right there. That's all you need to wear. And then we see the little lever get up to go underneath of it. So huh? everything could be pow, pow. And he was like, oh. She said, yeah. you ain't never going to guess who gave us this. Mama Wanda. Say, look. This is mama. mama. Say, what? I said, okay, this makes sense now why she never flew out. <clears throat> she got everything she need over there in Huntsville <laughs> with somebody. Competition <laughs> Mama is a goddamn freak. freak. Why you ain't teach, teach your daughter? Cause they over there, Marso act like he ain't never seen negligee on the child before. <laughs> why you ain't why you ain't giving her up? <laughs> Help her out. <laughs> each one to each one. God damn. So put a little bit of spice in her life. Yeah. yeah. So of course you got the Melody and the Martell situation. I'm not even gonna go into them because I'm gonna go into them in a goddamn minute. Hmm. So now we're back. And it's time to do what we all came to this freaking show to do. We want to hear about these god doing houses in yeah, this what they have, group. Is they coming up? They being built? What's going on, man? So first, Melody and Martel were sitting together, and they had just had a conversation with the banker. And Randy. The, and banker was like, "Listen, the numbers don't make sense. I can't make it make sense. I cannot secure the loan with only four signatures." And they was like, "Hold on, one it's, plus two. It's supposed to be six signatures." So what the buck is going on? And they were like, you know, Letitia signed off on the paperwork and Kimmy signed, signed off, off on the paperwork, but the Scott brothers did not sign off on the paperwork and they sent everything through. And I don't know what to do with this, but y'all are not secure enough with the four of you all to secure this kind of money. So I'm sitting there like, hold on. I was like, something ain't adding up something right here. Something ain't adding up. And um and the reason why I thought they wouldn't add up because they had funding for the bigger project that I don't remember how long ago that was. Yeah. But this is a smaller project, so you're trying to say that they don't have enough to be able to secure yes. this smaller project, which those two houses probably gonna cost maybe about what, maybe two, three hundred thousand to build together. Plus, you know, I'm I might be a little high, but I don't know. I'm not a contractor, and but we're, we're I'm like, but I'm like, wait a minute. They wanted them to get approved for both of them houses, so it doesn't make any sense. So the group decided to come on back together, and they needed to talk about this. And then before they could even get in really into the nitty gritty, we come to find out that Melody and them had also been doing appraisals that they were paying for out of pocket because I'm not going into it. Yeah, so the crew, so they was like pretty much they started to do the same thing they, they did, did before. before. It's going ahead and doing, doing stuff, stuff and then coming back as if y'all didn't do y'all didn't part. do your part. But we, we didn't ever know that about yeah, us. We the comeback group, but we don't do things as a group. Y'all let us know it. So the shade and the shots were being thrown right mm -hmm. out the gate. You know, we talked to the banker. It's only four people in the signature. So what is it that what y'all what y'all yeah. are 
we know that y'all don't have some financial issues in the past, so maybe that may be a reason. Now, that's the confessional, right? And I'm sitting here like, y'all got to have a goddamn reunion. Yes. Because the shade that y'all throw at each other and the information that y'all throw out there makes people start. And I'm not that kind of person because I ain't got that kind of time. I'm not doing that research. Kind of care. But some people will go and research it because yeah. I saw it in my comments where people mm. were like, you know, such and such don't have financial issues, mm. bankruptcies, and this, that, and the I'm third. Like, I ain't got time like, for I got my own skin. I got my skin. own skin. Own skin. I if ain't I'm got running time my own that. numbers, I'm not running this. Exactly. So, but I will tell you this. There isn't a person that has been in business that have not had financial difficulties exactly. starting off. Exactly. Even, even the president of this United States. Yeah, he was, he was in bankrupt a few times. That's the way millions you, of dollars. That's the way millions. you get a fresh start. Exactly. You want to that crap. They say you gotta fail your way to success. So not to say that that's a great thing, but it's an option. Yeah. If you're trying to get something up off of you. Exactly. Especially if you're gonna go mental. But that's a whole nother video. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't we black people. We just look. This is what I learned a long time ago. I know I'm gonna get myself in trouble. I don't really care. Because I used to ask older people, like retired people and all this, people that I knew that were fin financially well off, mm -hmm. retired, all of this. And I would always ask them, how do you do what, you, what you've done? How did you achieve the freedom that you have? And you know what they would always tell me? Save. I just say, no. Nah. I know that's not yeah, it. Yeah, that's not it. So more as to black it than people, that. stop holding back the secrets of success exactly. from other black people. Exactly. We need to know that skit too. It's not just that your grand, you gonna teach your granddaughter or people in your family. We all are in this together. Exactly. So they gave us a bunch of solutions without a strategy. Yeah. yeah. I know that I've been doing that since yeah. I was freaking 18 years old. Yeah. So what's the strategy to saving? Yeah. Because there's much more to it than saving. But that's a whole nother video. Whole nother video. That's a whole nother video. <laughs> so, talking to them about this. <clears throat> and once they broke everything down and me being from a business background. Hell yeah, that makes a god doing a lot of sense. Yeah, when they did the articles and put down how the businesses are structured and who's supposed to be signing, yeah. So if these uh. were individuals securing these properties, that's right. Then all six of their signatures be needed to be on there. Exactly. But if you, if the corporations are the ones securing this money, then only the, the signer of that corporation needs to sign paperwork. Exactly. Because the everybody that's in the articles exactly. is responsible for the company. So exactly. you need only one signature. So, that's so right. they said we don't know how Holton Holt is um structured, but over here one signer does it all. Exactly. Now if you all have it so that both of you all have to sign off on paperwork, then both of you all signature needed to be on the paperwork and that's fine that's your business so that was making me think was randy trying to run their personal income and not the income from the business yeah because i'm like as a person that's trying to you a banker this is what you're supposed to do commercial real estate you know how this works so yeah probably yeah. just drama for the but show. i'm like either way even if it was their personal or even if it was the business they should have been approved, so I think this is smoke and mirrors just for the, for show, the show to create some drama because it doesn't, it don't make sense. Yeah, once it was broken down, I was like, that yeah, doesn't make sense at all. Any of us could have get approved for that loan to build them houses, man. Yeah. If you got good credit, you can get, <laughs> you can get, you can get that loan. You get anything you want to get. <laughs> so at this point, Melody is like, you know what? I'm about sick and tired of the comeback group. We can do everything that we need to do on our own. And what we don't need is having y'all basically riding our coattails to success once these houses are built. And they were like, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, Marceau was like, wait a minute. Didn't all of us put up, he said in the confessional though, didn't all of us put up equal amount of money? So how is we riding their coattails? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is going on here? So once again, <clears throat> we have this big divide about nothing. Yeah. In the guy doing comeback group. Now... Everybody decided, okay, you know what? We're not going to let this obstacle get in our way. We're still going to do what we came here to do. Mm -hmm. And that's to build these homes. So everybody that's in, raise your hand. Everybody raised their hand except for Martel. Martel was like, you know what? I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. And um, Melody was pissed off because <laughs> behind her, you know, when, see, they, when they were by themselves, they had they a was like, he was like, no, nah, I'm on out. We ain't doing this no more. We're going to do this by ourselves. And got in the meeting was like, I'm on the fence. Yeah, I done been in that situation. <laughs> I think every man. Not, 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 not with you, but oh, just. Oh, you've been in here with me too. Have I? Yeah. Y'all, yeah, we've okay. been a lot when it came to. 
Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot all about got all about that. We should. But the reason why <laughs> I believe that Martel was on the fence because when Marcel and them started telling how things are set up, which they already know how things are set up, it made sense. It made sense to he know he know how it worked. They know how it worked. Yeah. So like, that's why I believe, like I said, it, it, was, it was it was drama for the show, man. It sounded good. Yeah. It was good for the moment, but whatever. Yeah. If you don't know business, you yeah you would yeah you would be like. That's bucked up. Yeah, that bucked up what they're trying to do. Yeah. And I was like, no. It's just like if you go into a doctor's office and his secretary is signing <laughs> off on all the paperwork, she has the authority to do what the doctor told her to do. Yeah. And anything that she does falls back on the doctor, not her. Exactly. That's how it's basically structured. So anyway, Melody, she stormed out and she was like, buck this, I ain't got time for this. And then Letitia, she was like, fuck this. I ain't got time for this. My soul was like, you know what? Y'all need to leave at separate times. Yeah, yeah, I don't need y'all be fighting out fight. there. <laughs> Let's just, uh. <laughs> But earlier in the episode, I was like, here we go with these relationships going two steps forward and five steps backwards. Um, Kimmy and Melody had met up. And they were talking and talking and talking. And Melody admitted that there was a little blowout. A blew up at the wedding on the yacht um they've had that whole situation all over again mm -hmm. and i'm not gonna rehash because i don't care anymore i'm tired <laughs> i'm tired i feel like martell cheated on me at this point I'm she know all of us i'm exhausted so i like melody but lord god her conversations come up at the worst time yeah her timing is like really off I don't know if it's a show or if it's her, but yeah. Her. And like somebody said, <clears throat> they were like, this has to be really fresh. And could it even be that they signed a contract to do this show, then they broke up and they got back together to film for this show. Mm. And it's like at its head right now. Mm -hmm. And now they're really working through it in real life and real time. Because it's just like, wow. Yeah. Like, I understand. Dude stepped out and, and he seemed like he's still up to something. Yeah. But God don't everything that reminds you of him cheating, boy, it happens at that moment. Yep. We can be at a funeral. Uh -huh. What you looking at that dead lady for? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you want her? You were talking to her when she was alive? Is that why she did? Because you messed her up? <laughs> what the hell? So she admitted that, you know, yeah, we had an issue. We had some things going on over there at your wedding. And you she know, was, she was Kimmy was like, so we and was, I went. We, we was in there twerking, and y'all was up there talking. Arguing. Arguing. How does that even work? Yeah. But anyway, that's that's how it worked. And Melody was like, you know what? Um, As my friend, I felt like you left me hanging when this initially happened. You didn't call me. You didn't check up on me. And Kimmy was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I do remember specifically that I did text you. And I asked you, you know, I basically put it out there. If you need me, I'm here, yeah. but I'm not going to pry. And she said, the reason I did it like that was because we're cool, but we weren't the closest at the time. Yeah. So I'm I not going to, on you. yeah, I'm yeah. not going to throw myself on you for the sake of getting in your business or yeah. even making you think that's why I'm reaching out to you. So basically I put it out there. If you needed me, I'm here. But if you don't feel like I'm the person you need to gravitate to in this moment, mm -hmm. I understand. And there's no hard feelings behind it. I'm exactly. that kind of person too. Exactly. And But the truth of the matter is, if you, you know, it's, you, we cool with a lot of people. You know, mm -hmm. we don't talk on a regular basis. But somebody that you haven't really been talking to like that, yeah, you know, y'all like, know each other. You know, ain't no beef. And, you know, we all good. Then all of a sudden, you going through something and they call and action what's going on. It, it, it just, looks suspect. It, yeah, it looks suspect. Is you... Is you calling because you're concerned about me or you just need some drama that you can take back to some other people to talk about yeah that. yeah so that's what she was saying and in melody's defense melody was like i think something like that was a phone call was warranted for that and i see it both ways i see it as i'm letting you know that i'm here for you if you need it and i'm mm -hmm. doing it in the in the least intrusive way that yeah, i know uh -huh. of and melody was like we're cool enough that you could have called me and maybe I would have opened up to yeah. you. So I see both 
I see from both sides but, but of the I, fence. But I got to admit, though, techs have really messed us up. Oh, yeah. It, 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 our social skills oh, have good. gone down. Because we don't talk to people face to face no more. It's face to face is more personal. A phone call is more personal. But we we in the generation now, we microwave talk. That's what I'm gonna say. We wanna quit. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what I need to tell you because I don't wanna get on the phone. Bring home. Because if we gotta talk about this, we're gonna end up talking about that. And I'm gonna look, we're gonna be on the phone for an hour. I don't got time. I text you and I know you text me back. Two minutes, the conversation is over. Yeah. So maybe people need to talk less and we can call you again. Yeah, we have a few people that we really just don't talk to because we know that there's going to be a smooth hour and a half missing out of our day yeah. if we even answer the phone. And it's not that we don't love these people. I don't have an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And you can't get them off the phone. And nothing that you... Listen. All right, I got all right, I got to go. But before you go, hey, what, what about that is? Okay, I got wait, wait a minute for you. I got one more thing. <laughs> and I admit, I'm terrible with it. I hate a telephone. So, so you just the phone, text. Somebody gets me anxiety. You're like, hey, bro. Hey, sister. How you doing? Da, 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 da. Love you, thinking about you. Yeah. Bye. Boom. Bow. I mean, I even do my brother like that. It's, it's getting ridiculous. And now that I have nieces and nephews, I have to actually like FaceTime. So yeah. that's more but personal we, but than we, other. But. but we ain't saying that texting don't matter because texting is. Texting you know, matters. Yeah, texting does matter because people be like, okay, you thinking about I don't know the last time I'm talking to you on the phone. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Because usually we text. Yeah. But I talk to you every day face to face, though. Yeah, you do. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I see it from both sides, but yeah. just a break in communication and what she needed at that time was she needed a friend to call her and to talk to her, mm -hmm. but Kimmy played it safe and I would have done the same thing to be honest with you. Yeah, because it gets sticky when you start messing around with people in their relationships, man, because all of a sudden you get blamed for it. Uh-huh. I don't we just did a whole lot of time with somebody come in and try to be the advocate, to be the peacemaker, to be the, the uh -huh. rescuer, the or the, uh -huh. the shoulder yeah, lean on so you can cry. And then when then all the when the rubber meets the road, then the other person is blaming you because you shouldn't have been in their marriage and you shouldn't have been in any problems, they in situation. So you brought me in there. Yeah, you brought me in. Or your spouse brought me in, or your girlfriend, boyfriend brought me into this. So I didn't come into it willingly. I just was a listening ear. So some people just stand clear and be like, you That's know what? Me. They I'll help you from a distance. <laughs> I'm one of the people, if I know both of you all, like know y'all, know y'all, don't tell me scared. Nah. If nah. both of y'all are not sitting in my face telling me, I don't want to hear from neither one of y'all. Yeah, because what's yeah. not going to happen is, you go back and you be in an argument and be like, yep, and even Lynette agreed with me. Oh, what? Uh, what, what and what? now they pissed off at me for no goddamn exactly. reason. And I ain't said skit. All I did was listen. So let me give you some wisdom for your life. If somebody comes to you with problems that's in a relationship, just let them talk. Don't give your advice until you hear both sides. Because everybody is going to tell how good they are and how bad the other person is because they want you on their side. For sure. That's good advice because you're going to end up in trouble. I'm telling yep. you. But I'm going to tell you who the real MVP was for this episode. Melody's mom. You know, so mama came downstairs <clears throat> and she was getting ready to leave and she asked her daughter, you know, how is everything going in your marriage? And she was like, it's going, but it's not enough. Yeah. At this point, you know, I think that because my husband says, you know, things like, oh, you know, I've afforded you a good life and I've done this and we've done this together that are above average, that that should be enough, that the apology should be enough, how we are doing things should be enough. And she was like, I deserve better, better. than this. And I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And the mom was like, you know, basically, I'm not here to get in your business, but I listen to the babies. And yeah. them children are saying things that I know that they are only picking up from their mother and their father. I was like, wow. So I was like, whoa. Yeah. So it don't trickle down to where the kids are hearing little things mm -hmm. and they're either starting to react differently to different things or they're starting to kind of slick say stuff. Yeah. That, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That is a real problem. So the mama was like, listen, um, basically... You know what's best for you mm -hmm. and your household and you know your worth. Mm -hmm. um, pray about all things. You know, have you talked to Mrs. Holt about it, which is Martel's mom. And Martel's mom was basically like, you know, men would be men. Take it or leave it. And I was like, that's that old that's school. That old school. Skit. Yeah, that old school. So yeah. you have to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Basically what they're saying is the man that you have in your life at that moment 
the way that they are acting, can you deal with it or mm -hmm. no? And mm -hmm. if you can't deal with it, then you, you need, need to exit to leave, because yeah. what you have is what you're going to have. Mm -hmm. Cause usually they don't change. Yeah. And I understood what she was saying, but she used it right. Yeah. So basically if you're not happy with the way that things are, you, yeah, your good. only option is to leave or stay. Yeah, because a good marriage counselor would tell you the same thing. Yeah. It's like if the person that you would, how they are now, if you can't, if you can't live with that, you don't get leave. married because it's no guarantee they're going to change because you can't change them. Mm -mm. Nope. So, you know, Melody was like, you know, I'm at a point where it's just not enough. So I'm like, wow. So are we at this point where, you know, it's time to... Maybe they may need to separate again. Yeah. Especially since every little thing is like really sparked him going to the gym late at night time or he got two phones. Yeah, we ain't even got to that part yet. Oh, man. So the men decided to get together and play flag football. And little Martel was with them as well. Can't remember the little boy's name. Looking just like his dad. Look just like him. So they're playing, they're playing, they're playing. And Martel... Gets an injury. He think that he tore his um, Achilles, Achilles, Achilles heel. tendon. And in actuality, he did tear it in, yeah. in uh, the scope. So he had to end up calling Melody. Now, before he even had got out of the truck to go play flag football, Melody had called him and was chewing him the hell about out the <laughs> about the meeting because they had had a conversation beforehand of how things were supposed to go. And they were supposed to meet in the middle. And instead, Martel said, Rrr! and he kind of left her hanging out the drive. But I'm like, you call him when you know he going to play football, though? But her timing is terrible. I was like, you know... <laughs> But he just for so the he show. Gotta take it. Maybe just for the show. I, I don't and know. He was like, so you still own this? And I'm trying to figure out like did but he was go saying, play football right after they meet no I, I, was I, it days I, I, after? I think it was days after. That's why he was I thought I think he, he was looking away. You still on this? I, got, I know she said to him something. They argued about that when they got back home. I yeah. know they did. Not at home. When they got in the car, they argued about that. So he tore his and he tore his thing. And she had to come down there and pick up the baby and take the baby back home with her. And the guys were going to take him to the emergency room to get his foot, um, just get the whole thing checked out. And I'm like, now I know my soul don't really do anything with the kids, but couldn't you leave one child with two grown men and, and, and they take, and she the kid, take, and, and she, she take, take him, him to the hospital. To the hospital? Ain't nothing gonna happen to the baby. I mean, my son might give him some peanut butter. You know, if <laughs> your child, ain't, yeah, if your child not allergic to peanut butter, then he's gonna make it. I promise you, Jesus, they ain't gonna make it. But I'm like, what the hell? But anyway, it didn't make a difference. But before Martel could go to the emergency room, he told Maurice, "Listen, my phone, my, 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 my other my, other phone is over there." Maurice was like, "My son said." Yo, we really, Man. did I just hear what you just said? He said, Melody is one foot out the door and you got two phones? And talking about that's your business phone? I'm talking about one for the plug and one for the hose? <laughs> what? I, 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 he said, a non-cheating marriage, two phones would be an issue. Yeah. In a relationship where there has been infidelity, you, you got, got two phones? Phone? Which I understand. He probably got a personal no, 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 problem. No, 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 Still a business right off. I, do, I, do. I got a business. I, I know. I, I knew you was going to say that. That's why I throwed it out there. I'm going to get you all riled Apps. up. Get you all riled up. I got two, three phones in my Martel, phone. Martell, you need to get rid of one of them god darn phones, bruh. Unless you, unless you in the Cause drugs. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> that that chick was calling you on one of them phones. Yeah. Unless you into some kind of drugs that keep the burner phone. You got to do that. But if all your skin is legit... <laughs> You need to put apps on your phone. You need to do Google, Google Voice. And I can't remember the one that you use. It's um, tell you something. And it's, yeah, it's quite a few. Just go, just, it's quite a few of Just go on the App Store, Google, Google Store, em. or if you got Apple, the, the Apple Store, and just type in uh, a phone. <laughs> <laughs> type in what? Phone. 
Maybe these phones, something will come up that you can use. Shoot. Like, barely anybody has my real, real and give phone Mel, And give Mel that number, too. Yeah. So she can monitor it. Matter of fact, give, give, her her, give, her, give her the password and log in so when that phone rings, she can see who's calling. She can pull it up on her computer. Exactly. Okay, I doubt it. So, what else happened? I don't think really anything else happened in this episode yeah, other than... Yeah, I didn't think of, yeah. Then this freaking comeback group, I'm like, are we ever gonna get these guys doing houses, Bill? Let me yeah. think. Da, 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 da. I think the house. This, this is why I think. I think it was a bunch of smoke and mirrors that the house is gonna be built because I know that this project, based upon what people were saying in the comments, because that's from in Nashville that they're doing a lot of good they're things. They're not from Nashville. They're from Alabama. I'm in Alabama. Well, Huntsville. I said Nashville. From Huntsville, <laughs> One of them Ville. Saying that you know, especially they're talking about the house and them. Very popular, very well, well known, respected. That they do a lot for the community, so I, I, I think they built the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably already built some out of already them bottom, and they're good to go. Yeah, I went out on um Facebook, <clears throat> and somebody had shared a couple of the model homes that um they they built, and I think one of them is named after one of their daughters or something like that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So they doing their god doing things. So. Oh yeah. But Melody, you got to stop shading everybody else. See, that's that stuff that they were talking about that once you, you came up, you got bougie. Because every opportunity that you can find, you take a shot at them being less successful than you. Exactly. Even when it came to their businesses, you know, we have two businesses that don't have no clout trying to back this um, project up. And I'm like... We need to stop, stop that. doing that. Because yeah. if that's the case, why even go into a project with them? You already know that their businesses exactly. are less profitable than you all's business. Y'all knew that from the gate. Mm -hmm. So why keep bringing it up? That's almost yeah. like being in a relationship with somebody that makes um, less money than you. And you keep bringing it up. And you keep bringing it up every time a bill is due, is due. You knew what you were getting into. Exactly. Like Ray Charles, so you knew the rules before you, you got into the this. Rules. <laughs> Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.